Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. All right guys, you guys have been asking for it. So let's do eyeshadow. Today I'm going to focus only on two shade combos because y'all have told me those are your favorite, um, but I always get so many questions still about how to pick two colors for this general eye look. It's really great, it's fast, it's easy, it's simple. You can still switch it up and do a different combination every day of the year. But let's go over some of the basics today and it'll help you guys out when you're choosing your two shades. So if you wanna check it out, please keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and thank you guys for being here. friends let's talk eyeshadows I'm excited I am just going to get my hair out of my face all right let's do this I already have my eyes primed and powdered I might put some more powder on there just to make sure we're fully got a good base so for those of you that don't know eye primer is magical for people like me with oily or aging eyelids if you have trouble at all with your shadow staying or creasing, I recommend an eyeshadow primer. And I recommend powdering over it. Always, always, always. If you aren't powdering with a setting powder, you at least need to find a nice magic eraser shade is what I like to call it, meaning a matte, light eyeshadow that matches about your general eyelid skin color. <laughs> Three of my faves, um, well, four actually. If you're super fair, I would say Cupcake. Cupcake is the color, if I can put these down without breaking them, it is the same exact color as Vanilla Dust. It's just not translucent, it's actually opaque whereas our Vanilla Dust is translucent. I always use our Vanilla Dust and gives me a nice base and then I am ready for eyeshadow and I know I'm gonna get a good blend because with this technique I'm talking about today, you gotta get a good blend. So you can add an extra color, technically it would make it a three shade, but if you wanna use one of these colors in place of a setting powder, you're more than welcome to. You can also use a loose powder, whatever you like. This is Cupcake. I'd say the next cooler option would be Pup. My favorite is Chai. That is what I use as a, um, on the daily. And then there's Stay Golden, which is a little bit warmer. So I use this all the time as what I call my magic eraser. And I feel like it's important to have in your collection, even if you want to do a two shade look every day. Sometimes you might pick up a shade and you're like, dang, this is hard to blend. It's it's maybe probably a little darker or too dark and so you need something to help it. So I will show you guys how I use this, but you can also use the setting powder in the same way. I just find having one of these in your collection of eyeshadows can go a very long way. So I'm gonna drop mine over there. My eyes are set, we're ready to go, okay? How you do your eye makeup, completely up to you if you wanna do it first or if you wanna do it last. I do it depending on the eye look I'm doing. If I'm just doing a two shade look, to me that's an everyday natural look. I do it after I do my full face. That just works best for me. Close with the rest of my makeup routine really well since I powder last, that way my eyes are ready to go. Otherwise, I would have to Prime, correct, powder, do my eyes, then do the rest of my face. I do that if I'm doing a dramatic look. Smoky eye, a lot of different color, or a lot of really dark shades. You gotta think the darker the shade, the more it can lead to fallout to affect your makeup. And it's a lot easier to take a makeup wipe and clean up under your eyes than it is to, granted, with cream makeups, it is still very easy, you can just kind of dust it away. I don't feel like it messes up my makeup. So I'm going to do my eyes last. Okay. I wanted to touch base on that because I get asked 
all the time. The two shade application technique I'm gonna be showing you guys today, I consider a no fail. It works for anyone's eyes, no matter how large or small your eyes are, no matter how mature or hooded your eyes are, no matter your eye shape, color, anything. It's just a nice general technique that then you can add to if you want to add more drama or you can make a really simple daily look from just using this technique and changing up your shades. It's also one of the most flattering, in my opinion, because it opens up everyone's eye. I don't wanna say that there's ever mistakes with makeup because there's not. It's all personal preference. But in my opinion, what I've noticed through the years is that most of the time when people are looking for a really quick, easy eye look, they take one shade and they do it all over the lid only and they call it done. And it doesn't flatter anyone's eyes, especially if you have mature or hooded eyes, which most people have some degree of hoodedness on their eye, even if they don't know it. And it doesn't, you can't even see the color. So I do have hooded eyes. Hooded eyes just mean that any part of your mobile lid, which is this part right here, is covered when your eyes are open. So if you can't see your entire lid with your eyes open, you have some degree of hooded. Now some people's, it doesn't mean that you have to have like this huge flap of skin completely covering your eye. It just means that it's not completely visible. Most people's eyes are not shaped that way. Most people have something here, especially if you have a pronounced bone, orbital bone like I do. It's just the way our eyes are shaped, okay? There's nothing wrong with it. It just means that technique-wise, if you put color on your lid and your eyes are open, you can't see the color. So what's the point if you won't be able to see it unless you're blinking or looking down? Um, so this technique takes that into account and it's gonna open up everyone's eye. It's like contouring for the eye, in my opinion, which is why if I do one shade, I skip the lighter one that I'm gonna be talking about and I only go for this first shade. And that is my one shade look. If I want two, then I just keep going. And you can easily add a third, fourth, a fifth, and utilizing this kind of order means you're always gonna know placement for the category. So that takes me into my categories. So those of you that have been following me for a while, this is gonna be a repeat, but sorry. Um, I know a lot of people come on and they're like, what's a category? I don't understand. And this is just a system I made up, okay? It's completely just to help my clients better understand Saints eyeshadows, the fact that they're very deceiving from the website, they don't look like the pictures do, and it enables you to know kind of where each eyeshadow is best on your eye, where you can wear it, how you can combine them. If something is cool, if something is warm, if something is shimmery or matte, if it's deep, if it's light enough to be used as a brightener, all of those things, okay? So I will put the categories right here. Um, one is a highlight, meaning it is bright enough to highlight your inner corner under brow, or you can pop it on the lid for that shimmer and that light. Twos and threes are pretty much just light colors. They can be mattes or they can be shimmers. So twos are lighter, threes get a little bit darker. So twos and threes are usually, I'd say if you're my skin tone, those are lid colors. They're not dark enough to create any kind of shadow on your eye. They're gonna be used on this mobile lid that we talked about. They can add brightness or they can add a pop of color. So no, my entire category system is based on just lightest to darkest, one being the lightest, fives being the darkest, and your skin tone does play a part. So what might be a great mid-tone on my skin tone, if you're darker than me, it's probably gonna be a lighter shade, it's gonna be more of a lid shade on you, and you might have to go into those five shades in order to see contrast on your eye, okay? So vice versa, if you're lighter, you might be able to use a three shade in order to carve out your crease. It kind of just depends on how light you are. So know that, but once then you try a shade and can figure out for your skin tone, okay, this shade doesn't show up on me well, that means 
comparing all of the categories and looking at all the shades, I need to make sure I'm going to a five, for example. It can tell you which ones to avoid for those certain areas of the eye, what category you need, what depth you need in order to get the look you want. Does that make sense? So it classifies our shades in a way that you'll be able to easily compare and contrast them, be able to easily be able to tell from looking at my chart, like which ones are cool, which ones are warm. Something is at the same level, knowing that you're not gonna get a lot of contrast between the two if they're both, say, four shades, that kind of thing. Does that make sense? Okay, so two, twos are light, threes are medium. Fours will always be matte. Um, in my category system, I consider fours mid-tone mattes, meaning they're all in this kind of, whoops, category system to where they're mid-tones, they're mattes. They usually are what's going to be really good to contour out the yeah. eye. Some people can go into these darker five shades, which fives are the deepest shades we have. Some people will need this if they have darker skin than me, but most people will be able to use a four or a four five. So it can be a little confusing, I'd say. Um, just let me know if you have any questions. I have entire videos explaining the categories in depth with swatches showing you examples. I didn't wanna to concentrate too much on that, but it is important when choosing shades, okay? So know that I do have the category system and I'm gonna explain what categories you need to stick to when you're choosing your two shades in order to have a no fail look every time. So step number one, this is gonna be choosing the matte shade, okay? We're gonna go back to those that we were just looking at. Four or four or five. So you can see in this palette, some of them are shimmery. They would be considered a straight five, okay? If it is a four or five, that means it's matte. Um, it can be a little bit lighter or it could be built up for depth and get darker, okay? But if it has a four in the category at all, that means it's a matte, okay? And I do have in my categories, they're, they're completely mattes are separate than shimmer so that you can tell the difference. But why do we stick with mattes for this shade? Okay, so for this this two color look, which obviously there's many, many techniques that we could use. Um, this one, you're always taking that mid-tone matte and you're going to use this to contour the eye, okay? So this is going to go in the actual crease. So your actual crease is where your mobile lid kind of goes into your actual eyeball socket, okay? This is your actual crease where the skin actually goes in. You can tell how mature my eyes are because they just kind of stay like that. <laughs> if you have a lot of texture like me, I promise this method is gonna be amazing. I recommend if you're over 30, sticking with a mat here. And that's because as we age, this skin gets extremely uh, textured. And when it comes to eyeshadows, the more shimmer a shade has, the more you see texture of the skin, okay? And that is simply due to science. It's called reflection. Um, and when that light hits your skin, it's gonna show texture and mattes absorb light. They don't reflect light. And so do you see, you cannot see the texture underneath that matte shade, but man, you can see every little wrinkle under the shimmery one. So what's that mean? If you wanna use a shimmer in the crease, go for it, but just know it will age you. And so if you're like me, and that's one of the things I'm trying to avoid with makeup, is it making me look older? I'm gonna stick with mattes only. Now, it's not like mattes will just take away all age or anything like that, but it's going to do much less because it's not gonna show as much textured. And when you get to being at my age where I have extremely textured eyelids, you can use all the help you can get, okay? So keep it matte and that way you'll see less texture and it also will just contour out your eye better. It looks more like a natural shadow. It's gonna frame your eye. It's 
gonna make your eyes look bigger. It's gonna, you'll be able to see that pop of color. It is just extremely attractive on every eye shape and size, okay? If you can nail the technique of just being able to go in the crease and above it, so you can see it with your eyes open, you'll be golden, okay? So number one is it's matte always. So it needs to be a four or a four, five shade only, okay? The deeper your skin tone, the more you'll be able to use a four, five. Now listen, if you are my skin tone or lighter, know that the darker you go, if you try to wear a four, five, it will be much harder to blend. It naturally, just the way eyeshadows work, no, the darker you go, the harder it is gonna be for you to really blur out lines and make it look natural without it looking patchy to where you're seeing these weird areas, especially on our eyes that kind of tend to move. If you have eyelid skin like me that tends to move as you touch it, it's even harder to blend out. So know that the darker you go, the harder it will be to blend. So one of my all time favorite shades is Revival. It's a five shade. It is very dark. I never wear this in my actual crease unless I am going for a very dramatic smoky eye. And I will never go straight in with this. When you're trying to wear a sh shade like that, you're gonna have to build off lighter colors. So I would have to go in and slowly get to that point. I'd have to put this all over my lid, my magic eraser shade, probably even go in with a little bit of Bubba and then Sedona. And as you work your way up to those darker tones, guess what? It blends out like a dream when you're kind of ombre into it. When you go straight into this and do a lighter area or even straight into that on like the color of my eyelid, it's gonna be harder to blend. I'm gonna need to use a lot of my magic eraser to get it to look seamless and not patchy, okay? So just know when you're picking out your first shade, which is a matte, I recommend sticking to that category that blends out easily for you, okay? So to me, that is a four shade. Bubba is one of my ride or dies, always and forever. I love this shade, okay? Now, when I wear this shade, I have to, like look, you can barely see it. I know it's a lot lighter than what is now my ride or die, which is Sedona, okay? So knowing how much to pick up on the brush is also extremely important. For this technique, the eyeshadow brush is the only one I use. This is the only brush that's really designed to blend and so that you'll be able to place the color and blend it out at the same time without any, especially without a lot of movement on that part of your eyelid will move more than anything else. Okay, even the smudge brush, it's it's too dense of a brush. You're not able to have that movement, okay? So the eyeshadow brush, you can do this entire eye look with no problem. I'm just gonna keep using these three as an example because they're my faves. So again, this color will depend on your skin tone. The lighter you are, you might be able to use something like Chai, okay? If you're a little bit lighter than me, maybe like amber highlight, um, Bubba would probably work really well for you. And Sedona is my favorite. This one I can use with very little. Now, when I go in with something like Bubba, and I'm gonna show you, I know I can sweep in generously, tap off excess, and then I can go in and I can slowly build up that color with a lot more on my brush and it's still gonna blend out amazing, okay? So I'm gonna go right in to that part of my actual crease to start placing the color and then slowly move my brush upwards as my eyes are open, okay? If your eyes are closed, you're never gonna be able to see if it's in the right place, okay? So in the crease, start moving it, eyes open, and make sure you can see it. And that's what's framing out your eye, okay? And you can see how it, to me, it's like a subtle, Okay, this is subtle, but very natural. It does do a lot for my eyes all on its own. It makes my eyes look a little bit less 
hooded and it makes me look a lot less tired, which I'm all for that. Okay, you can go down a little bit into this outer corner, small circles, and then right back up. Okay, now this color is really easy to slowly build. So I say those four shades, that's why I usually recommend starting with the fours. They're very easy to slowly build. So let's show a little bit of the fours. Okay, so we have Bubba, which is warm. To me, it's like a nice bronzer. It looks like bronzer, okay? It's extremely flattering on most skin tones. Now, I know a lot of people are very anti-warm, and so you can go into something that looks more like a natural shadow. Um, that would be basic, in my opinion. So basic and Bubba are two staple shades. They will work with any other shade you choose. Now hear me on this, because so many times people are like, I don't know what to pair with it. A neutral will go with anything. It doesn't matter what of this next shade you choose, it will work with everything. I can pair those two colors with any other shade and it would look amazing. They're staples, okay? So, the more undertones you get into other shades, I feel like the more it can issues. And I'll explain why here in a minute when we talk about choosing the next color. But Bubba is warm, Basic is cool, okay? They're about the same depth. I'd say Basic will give a little bit more of a shadow. Bubba's gonna give a little bit more of that bronzer look, which is my fave, okay? I've even worn them together, mixing their magical they all work okay then i would say two of the cooler more purple tones that people like would be lullaby and cafe okay lullaby is a little bit more purple cafe is very similar to basic it's darker though okay so this is cafe this is basic it's darker and it has more purple in it can you see that but it does give a very nice shadow to the eye as well. Now, if you have similar skin tone to me, these can sometimes pull um, patchy because they're so cool. Um, for me, it's just my skin tone. I'm naturally warm, so warmer colors blend out easier on me. So know that if you are using a color and you're like, it's just always looking patchy, um, most likely it's probably cool because cool colors tend to do that. Exact same thing happens with contour colors. Contour colors are the same way. When you have a contour pulling patchy, it's usually because it's too cool for you. Same thing goes with eyeshadows, okay? If it's patchy, find a warmer shade. If you're having trouble blending it out, you need to go one warmer, okay? So um, the next warmer would probably be Bird, okay? Bird has a green undertone. Can you see that? It reminds me of like henna. I can't bend both of those. It reminds me of henna contour it's kind of olivey undertone but it's another one that looks really good with pretty much everything unless you're putting something also olive on the eye and then it can affect it because you'll get that one color look i think a lot of these uh are getting into four or five category okay zion's another really pretty one that also though very different undertone it's even warmer it's more of that red undertone is this butterscotch i think butterscotch is way warmer has more of the yellow undertones so once you get into some of these others they can be a little bit different undertones but it doesn't mean they're not still pretty neutral they are and so they can work with a lot of things oak is also one of the most universal compared to basic i say it's a darker version of basic okay it is like shadow okay it's just like a straight up shadow um and it does work really well to add that contour as well so to compare bubba and sedona this is bubba and this is sedona okay sedona is just a little bit darker sedona is still warm if you can see that um and you can really tell how much warmer it is than oak. Oak is straight cool. These two are both warm, okay? But it is considered a 4-5. It's very similar in depth to oak. 
Um, it can be kind of built up or you can apply it really lightly. So I showed you how I put on Bubba over here. I'm gonna show you how I tap in to Sedona. Because one of the things that I hear a lot is people having trouble blending, okay? So we already established the darker you go, harder it's gonna be to blend. Now, if you use something that's a little bit, maybe a little bit darker than your natural eye lid color, and then you go with a little bit darker, sometimes this will, it will help it blend out just a little bit easier. Um, that's one of the main reasons why we use a powder on the lid so it doesn't have that sticky base anymore, and it gives us a nice glide to the brush, a nice blend. Okay, so when I'm going in with Sedona, I barely tap in and tap off excess. And then I do the same thing. I'm gonna close my eye, go into that crease, kind of place the color. This side is harder for me. <laughs> and then start blending. I definitely feel like you can get a similar look with either because I just applied way less with this one, way more with this one. But if I didn't tell you those are two different colors, you probably wouldn't have noticed. So I'm always saying, know how much your brush is gonna pick up. Know your shadows as well. This one tends to fall out more. It creates a little bit more dust than my Bubba does. All of our eyeshadows are kind of different. You get to know them as you use them a little bit but I always recommend tapping off excess so you don't get, you're not leaving to fall out, which especially if you do your face first, we don't wanna to have to mess with, right? Another great tool to have in your kit is this eyeshadow, I always call it the eyeshadow switcher. The brush cleaning tile is like magic. I use this thing so much, I can't even tell you. It doesn't matter the eyeshadow look I'm doing or technique I'm doing, I always am using this in between every time I'm switching colors. It is a game changer. And I love the fact that they fit in our compact now. Cause years before, if you watch my old videos, I had one separately that I used. So it's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to some of these colors. Now, these are, I believe threes. Some of these might be fours. And you can tell these are a lot more colorful. Okay, so if you are lighter than me, doesn't mean you you might be able to wear some of these. Um, it's not gonna create much of a shadow, okay? Know that the undertone and the color you choose will depend if it's going to contour out your eye or just brighten and be able to show a pop of color. Completely two different things. So that's why a lot of times you will see me where I use a neutral, something that will actually add that shadow to my eye. And then I might go in with one of these colors up over that in order to see the brightness, to see the color. Um, it depends on the look you're going for. That would be probably more a three shade look. But no, that is why I don't tend to pick these as my only option when I am doing this type of eyeshadow tutorial. When I'm doing the two colors, I usually don't choose one of these brighter ones. I have shown them before, but you can tell. See how light that is? Like Havana is a beautiful color. Does it give me depth and definition to my eye? No, but I can totally put Sedona here and then add a pop of that over it and I can see that color with my eyes open, which is a win-win, okay? It's not necessarily a two shadow look, but know that that's why I tend to kind of avoid some of these more colorful shades when I'm doing that kind of a look. Um, some people might be able to use London. London does have a little bit of a sheen to it. So for me, the texture of my eyelids, it's not my favorite. Um, and so I kind of avoid that on my hood area. So I stick with these over here, which are in the more neutral category. And if they're a little bit warmer, I can wear them and I feel like they still give me a lot of definition. When they're deeper, they will. When they're lighter than your skin tone, they're not gonna give 
that depth, okay? So we're still trying to get depth and we're still trying to contour out our eye, but obviously the more neutral you pick, the more wiggle room you're gonna have picking that next shade because it will go with anything. You don't have to overthink it. If you're gonna pick a color, know that your options will be limited for that next shade, okay? Recap. We're gonna pick our matte shade, okay? More neutral you go, the more fun you can have with your next shade. It is based on your skin tone, okay? Darker you are, the darker you can go, but no, if you're lighter and you're going towards that four or five category, it will be harder to blend. You might need a magic eraser shade to help clean up edges to blur lines. And then application, okay? Depending on the shade and the depth you go, but the general rule applies. You're gonna go into the crease, open your eye, and blend it out until you can see it, okay? That's it. That is our first color. Whatever you want to use, go for it. Um, you just want it to give your eye definition, open your eye, contour it slightly so that you can get the best blend, and then you can go in with your fun pop of color. Now, I personally always use this color on my lower lash line. Um, it's definitely a personal preference, and I know a lot of people have questions about haloing. So let's go over that real quick. Now, I find if you stick with whatever you use in your crease for this first four or five shade, you should be able to use the same color on your lower lash line. Now, if you went really dark with something that probably didn't blend out very well, then it probably is not your best bet, okay? If I stick with four, four, five, I always use it on my lower lash line. Keeps it really simple, keeps it really cohesive, and again, it will make your eye look bigger. So let me show you the difference between both. Now, the great thing about the eyeshadow brush is you can just flip it around, and this is the perfect size. You do not want such a small brush. Like, I love the multitasker, but this in is more like a liner, okay? This also, more smudgy, it packs on more color. This is almost like a small blending brush. So it blends and blurs that eyeshadow along your lower lash line. We are trying to get away from the harsh lines under our eyes as we get older. It will just emphasize and make us look older. So if you love your black eyeliner, go for it, but I'm telling you, once you figure out how to halo and use less and use eyeshadow, it can be a big game changer. I know it was for me. So the trick is not going so light that you can't see it. So let me show you. Chai, when I use it, doesn't do a whole lot. <laughs> I mean... I'd probably set my under eye a little bit better, but that's about it, okay? So if you're using a color about your lid shade, it's not gonna do much. It might kind of help finish out, maybe help you not have smudges if you put mascara on your lower lash line, but that might be about it. Let's see if we can see Bubba over that. So Bubba, and this is still probably my favorite for the most natural halo, okay? It just slightly gives definition to my eyes, okay? And it's not dramatic, but for the daily, I like to use Bubba. It is my go-to. Any of those other four shades also work. I do um, kind of avoid sometimes using the reddest shades because sometimes it can make your eyes look red. Now, warm is different. Like Sedona is warm, still is fine. Um, but when you get into Holly and Zion, sometimes a little, it goes a long way. And then I will kind of use a neutral with it just to tone it down slightly. So it is still tied in, but it's not so red. Okay. So the trick is a color dark enough to give definition and not so dark it's closing off your eye, okay? And then you can always go in with the big end and blend it out. 
personal preference how dark you go. You might prefer cool colors because it's gonna give a little bit more of a smoky effect. I like warm colors because they look better on me. Again, it's all personal preference, but using that same color is gonna make it super easy because you can just da 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 and then go halo and you're good, okay? Now, if I am then taking a day to night look, that's when I will pick up like my multitasker and I might pick up one of these deeper five shades that I like to use for liner and just bring it slightly in the outer corner, okay? But that would be an additional shade. Today, we're just sticking with two, which means using your illuminator to brighten. We're not even adding a brightener shade and not even adding eyeliner, but you definitely can if you want to take an extra second or two. We're keeping it easy, okay. All right, so I like to always start with the matte shade. It frames out your eyes. You already got a nice base. You can end right there. So when I was explaining earlier, if you do a one color shade, this is what I would do. I would simply throw a color in my crease, under my eye, and I feel like my look looks very natural, yet it looks like my eyes look better than they did before. So that's my one color look for sure. Then you can step it up and now this one has a lot more versatility. You can go with a shimmer, you can go with a matte, you can go with anything lighter than what you used as your matte, okay? Anything, but here's the kicker. You want it to have contrast, so one of the, I'd say, number one combos people like to buy and try, and I get it because they look beautiful next to each other, um, but then people will come back to me and they're like, I, my, it looks like I have one color all over my lid. And that is because there's no contrast between them. So yes, you can go into a one, two, or three shade if you're using a four, but if they're the exact same tone and almost the same depth, you guys, our eyeshadows can be very versatile depending on if you saw Sedona here, okay? If you wanna wear it lightly, okay? Or if you wanna wear it heavy, they can be very different, okay? So that means how you apply can affect what it looks like on your eye. So you think you're picking two colors far apart because one's a three and one's a four, but actually you're applying them in the way that they look almost identical, just one's matte and one's shimmer. So the number one thing I see is Lullaby. Everyone loves this shade. It's beautiful. It's a nice mauve matte, okay? Well, it looks great, especially if you love cool shades. A lot of people pick up that color and then they will pick up bend and snap. Okay, now if you look at them next to each other, they look so pretty, right? They're the same tone, they look like they would go together really well, but the problem is they almost go together too well. Because when you put this and then you start blending, it is hard to see any distinction. You might see a little bit of a glow on the lid, but that's it. You're gonna look like you just have the same color all over your eye. Again, it can affect how much of each color you apply. You apply enough lullaby, then bend and snap will pull a little bit lighter but you have to really, really, really build it up, which again, it's a cool color, so it can be harder to blend out. And I think that's where the issue comes in is that people applying a light hand, a lullaby, a little bit of bend and snap, and they're like, my entire eye looks the same color, okay? So my biggest recommendation is making sure that they contrast, okay? Make sure they're not the exact same tone um, which can be hard from the website, which is why um, if you want to request my eyeshadow resource, I will link that down below. 
Um, it's pretty much has my category graphic. It has swatches of every color. Um, I do feel like swatches, natural light swatches are far more beneficial than just looking at pictures online. Some of the pictures on the website look nothing like the actual color in my opinion. And so it can be so deceiving, like pretty sure this color online looks green. Like it doesn't, it doesn't make much sense to me. Some of them look really off. So check out my swatches. Um, you can request that in the drop box below the video. And hopefully that will help you when it comes to picking out eyeshadows as well. Okay, but that means you can go with anything lighter, okay? Because the lighter shades obviously are gonna give great contrast. Now, on a daily, if I want a really natural look, I will go in with a, a one, a one shade um, or a two shade. And I'll just barely add a little bit of light to my eye. Or if you want a little bit more, press on with your lid. So this is Rome. It's one of my favorite for a daily eye look. Bubba, Rome. I can use this to even brighten. If you stick with a shade that brightens, you can just use one and done and get your entire eye look. Is that not pretty for every day? One of my favorite combos. This is a really great subtle shimmer if you have mature eyes. But you can do the same thing with Drift or Sabrina. You might just not have to apply as much. So a shimmer works really well to catch the light, even if you have mature eyes, okay? Mature eyes can totally wear shimmer. Just don't pick it in the crease. Don't put it where you have the most texture. Keep it on your lid. Keep it right in here and keep it off the lower lash line, especially in here where we have lots of crinkles, okay? If you keep it on the actual tear duct, it's not gonna increase the look of texture. Just look at your own eyes and be like, where are the flattest part of my eyes? That's what I do, it works. You guys, before I became a saint artist, I wore pretty much, it looked like chai. I wore one color eyeshadow and I stuck to mattes because my eyes were already textured and I knew it. And I was only 34 and I was already wearing only mattes all the time because I thought that's what would help my eyes look better. And I'm telling you, going back to shimmers was a game changer. It looks, I feel like I, my eyes look better with a little bit of shimmer than all mattes. I know it's a personal preference, but to me, the light reflection on the lid makes my eyes look bigger. It just helps. So don't be scared of a little shimmer. There are certain shimmers that are a little harder to wear, like this is Angel's Landing. It looks like a straight up glitter, even though it's not. It's a it's just a shimmer shadow. But again, our shimmers are not all the same. So I have videos on that as well. And I believe that graphic is also in my eyeshadow resource showing you which ones to maybe avoid if you don't want super foiled, glittery, like fallout shades. There's a few to avoid. If you want all the glitter, there's even glitter eyeshadows, okay? But the main purpose of this shade should be just lighter so you see contrast between your crease and your lid. That way it contours your eye, okay? If it is lighter, it's just gonna make your eyes look bigger and brighter. If you go darker here, you're getting into the smoky eye category, which I feel like the best way to do a two shade eye look is to keep it the opposite. Keep it lighter on the lid, darker in the crease, so that way it's a great daytime eye. And then if you wanna take it to nighttime, you could easily add liner, add an outside corner um, with depth, maybe even add more color up here and you're good to go. Okay, so the closer you get when you get into these three categories, which are some of my favorite shimmers to wear on the eye, they can be closer to this. So. Sedona here, I did not apply heavy. I kept it about the same depth as Bubba, which is Bubba a little heavier. So I'm gonna show you how sometimes it can cause them to look maybe too much like one color. Let's, let's do some swatches. Here's Sedona. 
okay? Here's a couple that probably don't look too similar, especially in the pictures, but I'd be afraid would give me a one tonal look. Do you see how they're in the same color family? They're only one category away. Well, Sedona is technically a four or five, but still, that means that if you apply it like a four, it's gonna be even closer to these. So this is You Complete Me. And this is hot chocolate, I believe. I'm gonna put it right next to it there. Okay, so now this is a full opacity heavy swatch of Sedona. And can you see how those are kind of in the same tonal family? So which one should we try? Let's do You Complete Me. I haven't worn that in a while. I'm just gonna go ahead and you can totally press it on with a brush. I'm just going to use my finger and just press that on my lid. Okay, so it's not bad, but can you see much definition between those two colors? I can't see much. So this is what I would do. I would try to build up the depth of this, or I would have, or I'd try to blend out this to where it has less on my eye. Okay, so if you have two colors and you feel like Oh, I've worn those before and they look like one. You have to adjust how much you're applying of each shade. So you either have to very lightly kind of do a wash of maybe this lighter shimmer shade, or you have to really build up the depth of the darker shade so that you get more contrast. Okay, now both of these are warm which is again why they tend to look very similar as well. Okay, now you can probably tell as I build up this color, it's getting patchier and it's not looking as pretty and as blended because I'm having to apply so much. So that's when I'm gonna pull out my magic eraser. I'm gonna get off excess using the brush cleaning tile and then I'm going to use this and I'm gonna blur those edges so it does not look so harsh. Okay, better, still not my favorite. This is why I like to contrast and do neutrals or warm with cool. To me, it always works um, because it's always going to contrast. So since this one is warm, I would have picked a cool shade so that I know the same tone is not going to be blended in. So let's try it with that cool bend and snap. This is actually one of my favorite combos is using Sedona with bend and snap. It's so pretty. Okay. Now putting those two on the eye, you don't have to worry so much about application and how much you're applying because they're always going to contrast because you have one cool and you have one warm. So let's try you complete me. with a cool option. Let's try it with Cafe. You see how much more those contrast? Like you're not, this is totally gonna shadow it out and you're not gonna have that one color look. So let's go in. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of Cafe. And I'm, this is how I fix it. So when I'm doing a two shade look and I don't like it, <laughs> guys, I've experimented a lot. There's a lot of times I'm gonna be like, eh, it's not my favorite. And I'm not saying I wouldn't wear this. I'm just saying like, if I wanted to tweak it because it wasn't my favorite, I go in with a cool shade and I'd hit that crease in between both those colors. So there's gonna be almost like that contrast right between them. So right in the actual crease is Cafe. Blend that out. Now I can go up a little higher with 
and not have to go as deep or dark, I guess, with Sedona. Okay, and sometimes it just takes two seconds to pop a little bit of a cool tone in there in between the two. And you might not be at two shades anymore, but if you like it better, that's all that matters. Okay, so let's go over some good examples for some two shaded looks. What I recommend is always having some staples first. That way you can pick the fun shimmery shades that you are drawn to and you're gonna have a lot more color options, okay? So let's go with the mattes first. I'm gonna see if I can even swatch Chai, but Chai could be a really good option if you have lighter skin tone. Okay, so first let's do some mattes. <laughs> okay, so my favorite four, I don't know how to show these. My favorite, they're not all four or fives. I started with Chai, great for lighter skins. Otherwise I'd say, Unless you're super fair, you could definitely start with a four, four shade. Okay, try basic bird. This is cafe oak. Then we go warmer, Bubba, Sedona, and then we get into some of the colors. So lullaby, Zion, butterscotch. I'd say those are probably my top favorites for four or five shades. These can be literally used with any other color, as long as they're not the exact same tone. These, I'd say, again, don't use the same color. I showed you the example of Lullaby. Same thing kind of goes for Zion and Butter Scotch. Did I say Butternut? I always say Butternut. Um, you wanna make sure that there's enough contrast. They're not too similar. I'm gonna swatch some of my favorite one to three shades. Um, and then I'm gonna share a graphic that will show you guys some combinations and hopefully help you guys with some ideas of some shades you can experiment with. Okay, so I added some shimmers on here that I feel like all catch light really well, are lighter than these shades, and I will kind of number and give you guys some, some ideas of how to pair what I feel like these all contrast really well. This was is hard because there are so many. I can create lists for you guys because there is an endless combination of shades within our line. So just for an example, let's pick. Okay, so these two, that's Bend and Snap, which I already showed you. There's Venus. You can tell Venus is really cool. So I probably wouldn't pair that with a lighter cool shade. I'd probably either give it a little bit of warmth for contrast or a much darker cool shade. Now, Lullaby is cool as well, but look at how much depth is between those two, how much contrast. They're, they're never gonna look like one shade all over, so you don't have to worry about that. One of my all-time favorite combos is Peppa, which people think is too pink, or people think, it. oh, that's pink, but it is so pretty on the eye, like it doesn't look pink. It is beautiful and just really natural. Peppa and Sedona, okay? They're both, both technically warm again, but see how much contrast is between them. They're not gonna look like one shade. So just make sure they're far enough apart that they're not gonna look the same. Or if they are pretty close together, I'd say try warm with cool or vice versa. That way you know the tones won't mix and look like one color. Okay, real quick, if you did want to adjust this shade even more, I'm gonna just take some of the roam that I put on this side and I'm just gonna pop it on the inner corner. Cause guess what? Using a lighter shade will always tone down that shade and what? Up the contrast. It's all about contrast with eyeshadow. So it's not all over one tone, all over one color, and there you yeah, go. I hope that was helpful in kind of explaining how you can easily pick two colors and always get a good look from it and not have to adjust it at all. Just have a nice natural looking everyday, no fail 
eye look. You need help with your eyeshadows or you're needing a color match in general, I always offer my eyeshadow suggestions in my color matches as well. So my color match request is in the drop box below the video. I will also put the request for my eyeshadow resource and I will try to actually put the graphics from today's video in there as well. So hopefully those help you out. Let me know if you have any questions or if you want to see some more combos. Thank you guys so much for watching. Love you guys. See you next week.